Sorry to interrupt. So, so as noted in her bio that was emailed to us earlier on, she's a, a woman of uh, many talents, a food scientist, a writer, a professional soprano, and an artist. She graduated from you know, McGill here, McGill University, and has worked in the food industry in different countries in the US, Ireland, Canada, and Latin America. Now, juggling her professional food science career, writing, singing, and traveling, and while living in Ireland, Janelin discovered her hidden talent for art. And following an introduction to oil painting and self-teaching, she not only has produced numerous paintings, but has received many accolades and awards for her distinguished artwork. We are privileged to have her with us today to show and tell some of her handiwork of arts. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming the famous one and only Dr. Janeline James. Yay! <laughs> thank you, thank you, Marion, for this splendid introduction. And thanks to West Island Ladies League for having me today. So what I thought I'd do is show you some uh, slide presentations. Um, the first will be an introduction you know, to how I got started as an artist and a bit about my background. And then I will show you two paintings that I created last year and how I did them, the process, the thinking behind creating the paintings, okay? And then um, I will just show you some new work that I've done. So that's the order of um, presentation. I'll ask people to mute their microphones unless you want to ask me a question. You can ask a question at any time. You know, just stop, just stop me whenever you're ready. But um, if you're not asking a question, maybe you can just mute the microphone. All right, so my story, just as um, Marion had indicated, I worked in the food industry so I studied food science um, at McGill and worked in the food industry for over 25 years in different capacities, research, food safety, new product development. And I worked in industry in several different countries. So first in uh, Trinidad and Tobago, and I worked in United States in research in Florida, in the fresh fruit and vegetable industry in California, then I moved to Ireland and worked in the food industry in Ireland for a large fresh fruit and vegetable company. And then I ran my own food business in Ireland too. So here's a picture of me. I had um, a brand, Taste of the Caribbean, and I was selling Caribbean style condiments and sauces under my brand and mixed spice blends and selling these products to Irish people. Now, at the time, the economy was booming, so everybody was willing to try new products that they didn't know, expanding their taste buds. So I even had the opportunity to promote my products on the Irish Dragon's Den. That was in 2010. So I won a lot of awards for my, my novel food products, novel for the Irish um, market. Then something happened. So those who may have remem remembered my presentation on, on the book, Escape from Error, I was dating an Irish man and he broke up with me and I was really sad. And a friend told me, go and do an art class, you'll feel better. And I told her, well, I didn't know anything about art, so what was the use of doing that? And she said, no, no, just do it, just do it for therapy. And so I did. And the artist was a gentleman from... Venezuela, who was living in Waterford, Ireland at the time, and he told me I had a good eye for art, and that's all I needed to hear. Any uh, encouragement like that motivates me to continue, and so I did. I continued and moved to um, this painting here is the first one that I've, I ever did. So when I was um, taking a class with Alfonso, he asked, "What? What did? You, what do you want to paint?" I said, "Portraits in oils." So I found um, a photograph of Wendy Fitzwilliams. She was Miss Universe in 1998, and she was from Trinidad and Tobago. 
And so I painted Wendy Fitzwilliam. So this was my first portrait. I tell people I never sell it because it was my first experiment with art. And I love it to bits. <laughs> so anyway, in 2011, I moved to Toronto and continued teaching myself. And I moved away from uh, oil painting and discovered acrylic. I like the acrylic um, medium because it dries quickly. And if you make mistakes, you can just paint over them and, you know, get results right away. I tell people I take a bold approach to painting because once I do some work, I like to show it. You know, some artists would hide their work or they're shy to show their work, but I was never shy, whether it was good, bad or indifferent, depending on the audience. I, I'd like to show my work. And so in 2011, as we say in Trinidad, hot and sweaty, just arrived in Toronto, and I had the opportunity to show some of my work in the um, Runnymede Library, because I went into the library in my neighborhood, and I asked about um, opportunities to show my work, and Carrie Banner was coming up. So the library, the head librarian said, just bring your paintings and we'll put them on the stacks. And so we did. So it was my first time showing my carnival paintings and Caribbean images in Toronto. Then I also applied for um, outdoor art shows in the city and got rejected every time until finally one group said, yes, you bring your stuff, we will help. <laughs> we'll accommodate you in our outdoor art show. And this was my first outdoor art show in Toronto. I didn't know how to fix up the tent. I had a red tent, which is not the best option because it kind of um, takes away from the color of the paintings. But anyway, this was my first outdoor art show experience. It was a group of Polish artists and there I was, non-Polish, <laughs> showing my work. So it was quite exciting to be able to participate in an outdoor art show with other artists. So I set up my booth. I had lots of carnival paintings and mostly Caribbean images. Nobody else had anything like this. So I was um, not only the only uh, black woman in the crowd, but the only one with carnival type uh, images. So I carried um, carried on you know, teaching myself and applying for art shows in the city of Toronto and um, acquired a, um, white tent sides, which are better for showing the art because you don't distort the color. And so here I was in a juried art show and a juried art show is where they um, get applications from many artists and they select the ones they want to participate in the show. So at this time I was doing um, landscapes, a Canadian type landscapes you know, scenes at the lake and things like that. I also found new ways to hang my paintings. So it was continuous improvement in terms of learning how to hang paintings over the years. So this was um, like 2016, I believe. Here, this was 2015, I sold my first big painting to a stranger. So it wasn't a friend who felt sorry for me and said, oh, I'll just buy one. No, it was a total stranger who came up and asked, do you want cash for this? I don't have a credit card. I said, do I want cash? Yes, thank you. <laughs> but it was exciting that somebody I didn't know saw my painting and appreciated it so much that they wanted it. And um, this was at a group show on a very big tent. So everybody had a space and you just had to fill the space with the art that you wanted to sell. So an exciting opportunity. So fast forward to 2020, during the pandemic, I got opportunities to uh, paint box murals in the city of Toronto. And this is an organization called Street Art Toronto. They have a competition every year. They send out a call for artists. You submit your designs and they select a few people to do murals in the city. 
So in 2020, after applying for four or five years in a row, my designs were finally accepted. At that time, I was doing jazz paintings. And I did jazz paintings for three or four years. And um, my painting, all that jazz, I used that as the, um, let's say, the image that I would transfer onto the boxes. So this is a signal light box, right? At the traffic signal and all four sides are painting, painted. And this one is a bell telephone box. And again, all the sides are painting, this, this side and the other side. Then this is on the Danforth, right? So east of the uh, city of Toronto, near the um, Greek town. And this was from a painting um, that I call Panjaz Festival. So I got that opportunity to paint a box on the Dan Fort as part of their regeneration project. So last year now in 2021, this image from a painting I call the 1940s jazz session that um, was accepted for the 2021 outside the box projects. So again, now this is just opposite Runnymede Library where I, I first showed <laughs> my painting. So it, it went full circle. But I'm quite um, excited by my murals in the city because people sometimes contact me and say, oh, I saw your mural. And now, because I put my Instagram handle there, sometimes people would write me or take a picture next to the box. They say, I saw your box on this, on St. Clair Avenue or on the Danforth, etc." So it's very exciting when somebody sees the box and then they tag me on Instagram or send me a note. And this is what um, the painting looks like. 1940s jazz session. So somebody bought this in Toronto last year, the original painting. But it's immortalized on that box on Bloor Street West. So that's a little introduction to my um, art journey. Now I'm going to show you a presentation on how I created the 1940s jazz session. So when I um, started painting jazz images, let's see, I did some in 2015, then I stopped. And then in 2019, I went in earnest and I was painting jazz musicians, singers, dancers, and I'd listen to jazz FM while I painted. So jazz music, for anyone who's a jazz enthusiast here, I'll put up some um, <laughs> definitions here, but originated in the African-American communities like New Orleans, Louisiana, and also Harlem, during the Harlem Renaissance, jazz became popular. So since the 1920s, jazz um, in all different forms has been out there. I When I decided to do the painting, I used photographs and video references. So I went onto YouTube and I looked up um, jazz musicians, videos of jazz musicians from the 1920s, 1930s, 1940s, just to get ideas. How they would play the saxophone, how they would bend their back to play the saxophone or the trumpet, etc. I looked at Pinterest, so another app where you'd find images of um, jazz musicians. I looked at a few online documentaries, Wikipedia, and I decided with my paintings, I won't put faces, just paintings depicting the movement of the body. So in um, the 1940s jazz session that I painted, 
I saw this image of Duke Ellington. I said, oh yes, he's a big one. And he had a huge jazz orchestra. I'm going to put Duke Ellington in the painting. So as you see, I just used this uh, photograph as a reference. And then I painted Mr. Duke Ellington. And they say his his career spanned six decades. So I did a little bit of research just to um, get an idea of who he was, his career, things like that. Another favorite, Sarah Vaughan. So Sarah Vaughan, American jazz singer, nicknamed Sassy or the Divine One. So she was very, very popular and won many awards for her fabulous jazz voice. In the 20th century. So I put Sarah Vaughan in my painting. Another one, of course, we can't forget Billie Holiday. So I looked at many different images of Billie Holiday and I chose to do this one. Um, it's a combination of several images that I had seen online. And of course, I put the gardenias, the flowers in her hair, because she was famous, uh, well known for wearing these gardenia flowers while she performed and she liked to lean on the piano while she performed. So as I mentioned, I don't put faces with the um, jazz singers. And it's a great conversation um, point because when people see the jazz paintings, they say, oh, there are no faces. <laughs> and I say, well, you just kind of get a feeling for the music, the overall sound by just looking at the painting and just imagining the facial expression. So here we have Sister Rosetta Tharp. She's said to be the godmother of rock and roll. And she would play to huge audiences, play her guitar long before the rock and roll, uh, current rock and roll people came around. She's said to be the originator. I would think she and um, who else? Little Richard. They were the godparents of rock and roll. They were copied after, but they all started it. Hazel Scott, one of my favorites, because Hazel Scott was actually born in Trinidad and Tobago. So I'm quite excited. <laughs> I was quite excited when I learned about her, her history and her origins. <laughs> Born in Trinidad and Tobago, a um, child musical prodigy. And uh, her mom took her to New York City when she was a small child. And she got enrolled in the Juilliard School of Music and started as a classical musician then branch out into um, jazz afterwards. And she was big in the Harlem jazz scene. So I had to put Hazel Scott in my painting. And there's Dizzy Gillespie. I just liked the way his cheeks would puff out when he played his um, trumpet, which was bent up in the air. So I put Dizzy Gillespie in this 1940s jazz session painting. Charlie Parker, another popular one. I had to put Charlie as trying to you know, copy the suit. Back in the day, these jazz musicians wore really nice suits. Louis Armstrong, of course, we had to put Louis Armstrong. He always had a um, a rag to mop up his uh, sweaty brow. <laughs> so I put a rag in the painting too. And then, of course, the dancers, because a good um, jazz painting needs some dancers show that people enjoyed and appreciated their music. So I found many images of dancers from the 1940s. I did this couple here. All right, I put them in. She had um, what they call the pillbox hat. I did this um, couple or a version of them. This couple here, I put them in, in the painting. So even though there were black and white photos, I just imagined the colors that they were wearing and I, I made it up. But great term reference. The photographs are a great uh, reference to get the, the body movement. Right, so that is um, 
how I, I um, created that painting, 1940s jazz session. This one here. So it's one of my favorites. And you see all the characters and um, the main characters that I put into the painting. So I showed you how I got information on them. Does anyone have any questions at this point about the 1940s jazz session painting? The energy that you're seeing when you when you uh, look at the paintings, they're absolutely stunning. Thank you know, you, you get you see the movement, the dance. You just it's they're really good. Thank excellent. you. Yeah, it's yes. excellent. And Thank I'm you. thinking, how did she get the idea of not pulling the face? Yeah, beautiful. And yet you could recognize who the person is. Yes. Yeah. Try to capture beautiful, the, um, beautiful the body movement. I looked at a lot of videos of these musicians. Yeah. You can find a lot them. of background work into it. Yes. Research. Yes. For this, um, because I listened to them on Jazz FM, listened to the um, recordings. And I said, you know what? I have to capture these people. <laughs> so, I'll capture I you did. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. And your and your sexy picture right next to it. <laughs> oh yes, yes. Check me out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So now I'm going to um uh oh I'm going to show you another one that I did last year called um Ma Rainey. Ma Rainey okay. was mother of We're the gonna baby. watch that. Yes, yeah, we're gonna remember? watch it in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So let me um pull up that presentation. Ma Rainey, Mother of the Blues. So that one again, I had to do my research and I found paintings of Ma Rainey online because um, in 2020, 20, there was a movie that came out. So you saw the movie. And yeah. I didn't know anything about her. Absolutely nothing. So I said, well, let me go online and do some research. Find out who she was. I got pictures of Marini and her band. And then, you know, um, found out that her, her name was Gertrude Pritchett. And she was one of the original um, blues singers. And she recorded many, many blues songs. And she was quite stubborn. You know, she knew what she wanted to sing, what she wanted to do. So people couldn't um, take advantage of her as they do with most musicians, you know, especially in that time. Well, even now. But she started singing um, with her, her husband. It was Ma and Pa, 1904. And they toured around with... Um, a band called the Rabbit Foot Minstrels. First recording, 1923. And online, you can, um, on YouTube in particular, you can see um, and hear, literally hear, because they didn't um, have video recordings. So I have one. Let's see if I could play it. Uh oh. I guess not. Let me continue with the presentation. I had a video recording, but it shut down. <laughs> All right. So I will continue with the um, the slide. Sure. Okay. So she recorded with Thomas Dorsey. Louis Armstrong, she toured and recorded with the Georgia Jazz Band. She opened her own theaters in Columbus, Georgia, where she was from and died um, at the age of 53. But anyway, so her character was revived. Um, she was a great personality and um, this, this movie actually brought her to the forefront for most of us who didn't know who Marini was. There are many Broadway productions, different versions of the uh, Marini story. 
So I use these images that I saw online for the color schemes for my painting. Because I was wondering what colors to use. In the past, they would have these velvet um, drapes in the theaters. So I thought I'd use, you know, burgundy and gold and, mm. you know, velvet dresses and all that for my color scheme. Because I needed mm. to know what colors to use. So with any painting process, I'd research the subject, look at photos and videos about their, um, their life and work, decide on the setting for my painting, I'd paint a, a plain background color, and then place the characters onto the background. Then I'd uh, sketch the musical instruments and then put in the, put in the people like kind of around the instruments. I like to put in the instruments as a sketch, then sketch the people, then paint lots of color, then add some little details at the end. Again, no faces. So exam for example, I found this photo of Ma Rainey. So this is my Ma Rainey, you know, with the necklace and the long earrings and the headband mm -hmm. over the wig and things like that. One of the um, guys in the band, the pianist, so I use this photo as a reference, Bessie Smith, who um, said, uh, well, they say she had a relationship with her, but I put Bessie Smith, you know, just kind of in the background next to her. And then, of course, I have to put in the audience in front of the stage. So I looked at some 1920s videos. Some were um, remastered and colored, put in colors um, online on YouTube. And so I looked at many videos to, to see how people dressed when they went to the club in, in the 1920s. And all the antics, you know, the drinking and the smoking. Who knows who this is? <laughs> Josephine Baker. So Josephine Baker made a cameo appearance in my painting. Put her in there. 1920s. This is a very different thing going and um, women smoked and, you know, it was a time of, of um, great Watch enjoyment. You. Everybody dressed up and went mm -hmm. to the club. So you see these um, three people at the table. I put them in here. Right, the smokers, etc. So, I have um a few little video clips on um painting. So I am going to pull them up. I have to open them first, and then we will see how I um. Uh-oh. All right, so let me open this. Right, so are you seeing this? Yes. Yes. Right, so this is the original canvas. It's a big one, um, 60 inches by 48 inches. And I said, okay, I'm going to put this, the uh, stage here. The stage would usually have a skirt <laughs> and then you have the front for the audience. And then I map the um, stage out, I kind of define the skirt for the stage a little better. Then I put the velvet curtain at the back. So just blocking colors and I use tape to help me um, define the line, you know, like the edge of the stage, the edge of the curtain, things like that. Then I started sketching. I use a gold, gold tip um, acrylic pen. And I sketch Marini in the middle and her musicians. Then I sketch the um, people 
front at the front of the stage. So I had photographs as a reference. I sketched them. Then I started blocking colors. So black, navy, blue. I knew I was going to give her a shimmery dress. So I put a black background first. The people in front, you know, some uh, different color dresses. Then I put some shimmery um, silver on Ma Rainey's dress and her, um, her head tie. She usually had a big fan with peacock flowers. So I put details on the curtain, the stage. I kept adding people gradually. There were people at the sides of the stage. I put in the um, musicians and people on the stage first. Then I went on to the audience. See the fingers ready for the long cigarette. <laughs> But um, yes, yeah, so this just shows you know, I gradually added more and more colors to the people in the audience. And I used the um, scenes from videos and photographs online to help me with the um, How long does it take you to um, complete a painting? This one um, took a few weeks, you know, because I didn't do it um, constantly. You know, I do some work, then do something else and get back to it. So it took maybe two or three weeks. Amazing. Yeah. So this is the final painting with the audience. So they're not dancing, but you could imagine the noise. Lots of suggestion in there. Eh? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Like everybody had to offer a drink and a smoke because mm. that's how it was in the 1920s. Yeah. Right. So any questions or comments about this one? It's a good job. <laughs> Thank you. Excellent. Thanks. So this is the same size as the 1940s jazz session, quite a, um, a big one. Mm -hmm. I was experimenting with big canvases. Okay. So those are some pieces that I did last year. And um, Maybe I could show you a few of the new ones uh, I'm working on this year. Um, I will actually show you some uh, canvases. I have enough space here. I don't think I have enough space because <laughs> I'm at, I'm in a tight spot. I might have to show you the. Um... That's okay. But it's mm. abstract. Yeah. So I look at some headdresses. I could go in any direction, this particular one. I looked at some feathered headdresses to get ideas of um, what to paint. But the last few weeks I've been doing abstract paintings um, and absolutely enjoying it because I'd never done abstract in the past. Nothing like this. But it's quite... Um, freestyle and I could I used um, a sponge I drizzled paint on I use a brush and just did abstract um, strokes you can see but the, the sponge gave a nice um, a nice sort of texture yeah you see so it was quite interesting to experiment and um, I'll show you one more abstract. I like the colors of this one. Again, I use a sponge to get those um, blobs with with um, little holes 
all caps. I've been putting an eye in these abstract um, paintings just, just for fun. So they all have an eye that pops up somewhere <laughs> on, the, on the canvas. So those are some samples of some abstract paintings that I've done recently. So every year I, I kind of... Uh, Jenny, man, yeah. I think you're just not telling us who this person is that gave you these lessons. The lessons. <laughs> <laughs> I'm teasing you. Oh, I'm just yeah. teasing you. Well, I do um, experiment when I get a chance. I experiment a lot. And I think um, maybe if I had formal training, I might not be experimenting as much. Absolutely. Know. You're right. So some people stay, you know, I, I met some artists in Toronto. They paint trees and they'll paint trees for the rest of their lives. But I'm not doing this. <laughs> So they're, I was really, they're really free, you know. It's beautiful. Thank you can you. see that you're free spirit in there all the time. Yes, I wish yes. I could do that too. Well, I Gorgeous. think um everybody has an artistic side that um can be well explored if, if you want to. Because like I, I'm a scientist, right? I still do some consulting work in food science and it's very straight and narrow and structured and all of that. Yeah, there's so I could do that and then escape <laughs> and, and break and away. Experiment. Yes, experiment with the art. So it's good to have that um, outlet, you know. I was going to ask you, Jenny. <laughs> You just moved from structure for your food science? I, I, were you too confined or it was just that you're, you like to dabble in other things? Yeah, I like to, I like to dabble in other things. Yeah, and um, because it shows your free spirit. Yeah, I'm with the, That's the right. art. She sure know. is. Yes. She sure is, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, with the art, you know, um, I don't paint all the time. But when I do paint, you know, I'll just do many paintings at one time. And then I might stop and, and do something else. It's not like um, some people are professional artists and all they do is paint and nothing mm -hmm, else. Mm -hmm. But um, I wouldn't say that that um, it's all that, that I do. I would try other activities, you know. That's what I said, free spirit. Yes. Yeah. Any Wonderful. questions? Anybody else or comments? I have a comment. Can you hear me, Geraldine? Yes. Your works are so beautiful. I'm impressed. Thank you. You're so Thank talented. You. I Thank love you. your colors. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. So you can see more of my paintings. I'm going to pull up the website. It's jennylynjames.pixels.com. And when you have time, um, I'll send um, Marianne the email so she could circulate the website. Mm -hmm. And you can go on there and, and look at some of the paintings. So are they in galleries based? Are you seeing this? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's different art galleries based on, on um, subject matter. For example, we have the jazz musicians and singers. And when you open that gallery, you you will see different jazz painting that I've done over the years. Yeah, it's incredible. So going all the way back, wow. you seeing them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's incredible. So going back six to seven years. Hmm. So a lot of these have been sold or retired. <laughs> but I'd say retired, you know, like um, I may have used the canvas for another painting. How did you do that? You painted? I like this one. I didn't like it anymore. So I painted over it. Ah. <laughs> so, but um, a lot of them I, I sold. But if, if I didn't like the painting, the uh, canvas is quite expensive. Um, stretch canvas. So I would use, use it and paint something that I like. 
they are full of expression and movement and oh, joy. Everything, they really are everything. Beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful. Beautiful. This one. They're all Joseph. very yeah. joyful. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. And the flappers. yeah. Yeah. To think you didn't you know, go to any art school as no. such. No. That you can produce. Yeah. yeah. You know, I think that is why she did, she could do so well because yeah, yeah, I mean, yes, they, they yes, want to restrict you when you go yeah, to those schools. Yes, yeah. yes. They are no, but she's cheerful. free. Especially they're cheerful and uplifting. There's so much yes. movement, you know. Mm -hmm. You want to get up and dance. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'll show you this gallery, classical musician. Yeah. I sang with the uh, Toronto Mendelssohn Choir. And we perform with the Toronto Symphony Orchestra. You see this painting here, mm. the um, the punk. <laughs> yes, it's actually the reference that I used is the lead of the violin section of the Toronto Symphony. So the guy is looks like a nerd, you know. <laughs> he doesn't look anything like this. So I, but I used his photograph that I saw online as the um, structure, you know, to get the face and the, yeah. the direction of the, the um, violin and the bow and the hands and everything. Mm. And then I painted the punk over it. Yeah. <laughs> so he usually sits right here, you know, look at him right in front there. Yeah. And I saw it's him what... once on the subway and I That's showed a, him what a, what a my talent punk. That you can. It is. Like, painting and he laughed <laughs> but in the stop. choir there were no. just three black women three of us and um so this is me in the back here with a big afro oh okay <laughs> and this is i call this one messiah magic and um i actually got a prize for this scarborough arts um art show 2020 they gave me um that pick so honorable mention for my messiah magic uh, paint beautiful yeah talent 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 mm -hmm. and you can't talent. stop, stop yeah. the talent from showing through mm, beautiful, beautiful. yes yeah, so these are um the various um and you have images so many. of the orchestra wow over um many years maybe seven years you know like so as I say, I wouldn't do all the work at once, you know, I just mm. do bits now and then. Mm. Yeah, but even that, what you have is so, it's plenty. It, it is. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. yeah. These are yeah. the new ones that I've done last, uh, 2021, 2022, the abstract paintings. The abstracts. Mm. So I'm experimenting with abstract and looking at Latin American or Mayan themes, masks and mm. uh, headdresses. Oh, okay. They so these nice. are all new they're ones. They're beautiful. Very nice. Yeah, yeah they're pretty. Gorgeous, gorgeous. The use, the use of color. Mm -hmm. It's just amazing. Oh, you, you're gorgeous. not afraid to lose, use color. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not at all. Well, that's the Caribbean um, personality. You know, we like yeah. bright that's colors it. for yeah. carnival. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And all that. This one here I did for um, the choir, the Toronto Mendelssohn Choir. They wanted a video of um, a painting being created, abstract painting. And the um, it was played to the, the choir singing because it's sung by the Beatles. And a lady from the choir bought it. So they had the video in the background and the choir was singing over it. So that was my first real attempt at abstract and abstract painting. So that was 2020. Mm -hmm. And then, um, well, after that, I said, I'll try some other things, you know. I love the one in the middle, the, the, the blues this and one? purples. Yeah, yeah like your, yeah, the colors. Those colors are or just these here? No, the one you showed us at the beginning before we started. At the beginning. Go down. Go down. Down? Scroll down okay. Scroll down, yeah. Go oh, down. this one, yes, 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 this one, yes, yeah, this yes. one. This yes. one, it it reminds me of feathers. Yeah, it's gorgeous. And this is a all big gorgeous, one. But these are my colors. I love yes, them. Yeah, yes. there you go. I love the purple and the aquamarine mm -hmm. too. I did this one live. I was on YouTube, and I played some music, and um, 
it was easy listening music, you know, and and um, I just got a big brush and just painted the strokes like feathers. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. And one thing she did also, you know, during COVID, some group have they have some people have bought the design to use them to decorate some of the mask, right? Oh, really? oh yes, yes, the facial mask. The facial so on mask, my yeah. website. Yeah. For example, if you like this this painting, you um on the website jennylynjames.pixels.com, you click on the image. Mm -hmm. And then when you look down, you see all the different things you could purchase. You could make with it. Like oh, a, yeah. um, you can buy a pillow, a bag, oh. postcards. Oh. A beach a towel, a coffee yeah. mug, a mask. So they're all yeah. available on the website if you're oh, interested. That's so cool. Yeah. Wow. Yes. It is. That's really cool. That's yes. cool. So you yeah. just click on it and then you can um can buy the, the mask or whatever. So that's wow. all on the website. It's a, a company that I partner with in the US. So they would give me a commission on the sales. Mm, so it's something you can look at if if you um, if you see a painting that you like, then you can get it on a mask or a cushion, or, <laughs> or you can buy the painting. Uh, buy the painting. That's yes, right. so yeah. some of them are sold already, but you'll see if it's available. Like the abstract ones that are the new ones are available. On a mm, all the abstract oh, ones, nice. yeah. And the older ones, well, they um they are on um merchandise because it's the painting is sold already the original mm. but you know they have nice um bags and they're beautiful mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. really yeah. beautiful yeah yeah beautiful a professional but wow you got that far professional <laughs> <laughs> amazing yeah yeah more than amazing. That's, um, Girl, that my is. congratulations. They are Thank just you. They are very good. Wonderful. Yeah, so you can go on the website, as I say, and, and look at the galleries. Each gallery has a theme, like this gallery is dancers. Right? Different yeah. dancers. Mm -hmm. I like this one. <laughs> yeah, so do I. Oh, yeah. Nice it takes two to tango. And then we have the yeah. Caribbean dancers. We have yeah. um, African American belly dancers, jazz, Caribbean folk. So there was one time that I was just doing dancers. Three different kinds. You got of a team in your head and you go for it. One That's beautiful. Right. Yeah. Oh, the flamingo. Look at that. Yes. Wow. I had a friend who was doing tango, so she loved this one a lot. <laughs> it takes beautiful. two to tango. <laughs> <laughs> I I have to leave, but thank you so much. Uh -huh. Yeah, you're most welcome. welcome. Okay. Yeah. Thank and, you, Monica, uh, for coming. Yes. Yeah. I have to run, and um, so we'll. I'll hear from you guys later as to what the next um, assignment will be. Remember to hit that subscribe button for daily and consistent content. Hope to see you every day. Hit the subscribe button.